Welcome to this video on general economics. My name is Moya Kihumba. In today's lesson, we are going to look at initial and scope of economics. And our content here will be, number one, the meaning of economics, two, economic concepts, three, the scope, methodology, and branches of economics, and four, the basic economic problem. We start by defining what economics is. And economics is a social science that is concerned with how different economic agents allocate scarce resources amongst competing needs and wants. When we talk of economic agents, we may as well be referring to the society. And uh, we'll talk about why we refer to economics being a social science. We'll also talk about scarcity, which shall talk about these economic resources and so forth. Eh? But first, why is economics regarded as a social science? We regard economics as a social science because it uses scientific methods to build up on theories, to build up on models that help explain the behavior of individuals, groups, or organizations. Now, these individual groups or the organization is the society that you're talking about. Well, as the fact that we use scientific methods to come up with models make economics both a science and an art. In our definition, we spoke of various economic agents. And which are these economic agents? And who is an economic agent? An economic agent is the decision maker. And in economics, we've got four critical decision makers. One of them are the consumers. And the objective of consumers when they are making their decisions is to maximize on utility. When you talk of utility, we are talking of the consumption, the household or the consumer delays by consuming a particular unit. The other economic agent is the farm or the producer, and their aim is to maximize profit. And they'll only be able to maximize profit if they are able to, number one, maximize their revenues, or two, minimize their costs. One of the two, not both. Eh? So the farm's aim is to maximize profit, and they manage to maximize profit by either minimizing their costs or maximizing their revenues. The, the other key economic agent is the market. And here in the market is a place where the interaction between these other economic agents, the households and the farm, are aided. This is where they interact. You see, for the consumer to consume, they have to buy certain goods and services. And those goods and services are produced by the producer. Now, they have to come to a common place. And in that common place, it's called the market. And their interactions are facilitated by the element of price. And of course, the other economic agent is the government, whose objective is to promote the economic welfare of the entire uh, economy. Our study of economics actually revolves on the actions of these four agents. But we put a fourth one, which we call price, and we look at, and we look at it. Now, what are economic resources? Economic resources, we say, are inputs that are used to create things or help you provide services. And they include factors of production, of course, you know, factors of production, you've got land, or natural resources, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, and technology. Those are factors of production, and they've got their only worth. And economic resources would include those factors of production. They would include time, and they would include money. And we say that these economic resources are scarce or are limited, are not all, are not as much, to meet all our unlimited needs and wants. And a need 
is something that we need is is a necessity for survival. While us, I want is simply a desire. Okay. We, we shall see how this scarcity of resources, because these economic resources we see as scarce, uh, help the study of economics. Now scarcity. And now we move to the second point, the second level, the economic concepts. Scarcity is a condition of having to choose amongst alternatives. And the only reason we are having to choose is because our needs and wants are unlimited. And these unlimited wants continue colliding with the resources which are limited, all right? And thus forcing us to pick some activities and to reject others. Again, I repeat, scarcity is the condition of having to choose the longest alternative. And the only reason we are choosing is because the resources, the economic resources that we've just spoken about, are limited compared to our needs and wants, which are so many. We cannot exhaust them. And because of that, we, you, you have to pick some activities and reject others. And we could define a scarce good as that wish. If you choose to have that, you'd have to give up the consumption of another one. If you choose to listen to this video, you may have to forego the opportunity of listening to another one. Choice. Now, because the resources are not sufficient to produce everything we need, we then must make a choice of to the need that we have to sacrifice. And economists, or from an economics perspective, people are assumed that they will always choose that alternative that will give them the highest satisfaction. The one that will give you the greatest of the satisfaction is the alternative that you choose. And when you do that, we refer to that position as rationality. Rationality is a situation where you always prefer more to less. You always go for that good that will lead you the highest level of satisfaction. If you are the producer, you always go for that alternative that will give you the maximum possible profit. Now, if you choose, it means you'd have to sacrifice something. You'd have to forego something. That something that you forego is known as opportunity cost. It is the alternative for a gone because you have to choose. It is the alternative for a gone because of the limited nature of our resources. It means that we cannot satisfy all the needs and the ones that we have, and we have to choose some and ignore others. Those that we ignore are known as the opportunity costs. Sometimes some books refer to opportunity cost as the second best alternative for a gone. Every resource can be put into alternative use. Uh, and the choice you forego is the opportunity costs. We'll go to the next slide. Uh, uh, and we talk of possibility, production possibility frontier, or production possibility curve. Uh, and, and basically, this is a graphical representation of the alternative combinations of goods and services that an economy can produce. It helps illustrate the concept of opportunity cost, choice, and shows the effect of economic growth. Though we are not going to look at them, the effect of economic growth in this video. The PCC indicates production of two commodities when resources are fixed. That last statement means that there are some assumptions some assumptions that goes with the PCC. All right. Uh, and what we mean here is that the production of one commodity can only increase when the production of other commodities is reduced due to availability or unavailability of resources. At such, the PCC measures the efficiency in which the two commodities can be produced together 
and helping the managers and leaders decide the mix of the two commodities which is most beneficial. The assumptions that I've just spoken about is that number one, we assume that uh, the resources are used to produce one or both of the two goods, not more than two. Eh? The quantities of resources do not change. Technology and production techniques do not change and resources are used in a technically efficient way. In other words, the PCC assumes that technology is constant, resources are used efficiently, and there is only a choice between two commodities. This PCC curve drives home the idea that opportunity cost normally comes up when an economic organization or an economic agent with limited resources has to make a choice. And we depict, depict PCC graphically as a convex axis, concave axis, sorry, with one commodity on X axis and the other on the Y axis. And at each point on the arc, the efficient number of two commodities that can be produced represent the efficient numbers of the two commodities that can be produced with two resources. The, the PCC is the one which is on to our light. If you notice on our X axis, we have capital goods. You can have any good there. Eh? On the Y axis, we have um, the consumer goods. Then you've got various combinations. We've got combination A, we've got combination B, we've got combination C, and so forth there. Eh? Now, all points which are below and to the left of the curve represent all combination of capital and consumer goods that are possible. The, that is the shaded area. Those are the ones which are attainable. You could put as many points here. The point above and to the right of the PCC are unattainable points, like point G. Points which are on the PPF, like for instance point A, Point B, and we could put as many others along that curve, are points of both full resource employment and production. In economics, when you talk of full resource employment, we are talking of a situation where all resources are being utilized. And when you talk of production efficiency, is a state in which a given mix of output is produced at minimum cost. It therefore means that even though the points inside the PCC are unattainable, we are there because some of the resources are unemployed or our production process is inefficient. I don't need to look at producing along the PCC curve. And those points will correspond with points like point D. Uh, and the only and the only way we'll be able to achieve full employment is moving from point D to point say point E. If you move from an efficient point which was attainable to one along the curve, what we are referring to as frontier here, then it means either we are using all our resources well or we are using them efficiently. It's possible that we could still be operating inside the PCC, such as point D, but our pro and still employing all our factors of production, but we're using them inefficiently. So the two reasons why we may be inside the PCC is because, number one, either we are not em employing all our resources or the production process is inefficient. Like I mentioned earlier, the PCC or PPF is concave to the origin. Uh, and that means when we move down the PPC, PPF or PCC, as more resources are allocated toward one good, the, the extra output gets smaller. So more of X has to be given up in order to produce Y. And as we shall see later, this is what we refer to as the law of diminishing 
returns. We shall look at that when you're looking at farm behavior. So, what are some of the uses of, uh, of the PCC or the PPF? We already mentioned it helps illustrate the basic concept in economics, that opportunity cost, the problem of choice. It is also a legalized definition of scarcity. All right? And three, it can help us make the three clear basic economic problems of economic life, what, how, and for whom to produce. We, we shall see this shortly when you're looking at the, the basic economic problems. But the what goods are produced and consumer demanded are depicted by those points that end up getting chosen of the PCC. How goods are to be produced involves an efficient choice of methods and proper assignment of different amounts and kinds of limited resources to the various industries. For whom goods are to be produced cannot be discerned from the PCC alone. There are some things that would have to consider in order to see what goods are to, to be produced. I'll come back to those three concepts shortly. What do we mean, or what are the various scopes of economics? Now, economics can either be positive or normative. It should be positive if our concern is on objective statements about what happens, what does happen or what will happen. And it will only limit itself to what can be le uh, verified by reference to, 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 to fact. For instance, how does a higher level of unemployment affect inflation? Or how, how, how has the COVID pandemic influenced online learning? Uh, and we find that this positive approach is more objective, more scientific, and that's what we shall use in our study of economics. Economics could also be normative. A normative economics is based on subjective judgment. That is, it cannot be made by solely an objective appraisal of facts, but will depend to some extent on personal view in interpreting facts. They can be argued about, but they can never be settled by science or by appeal to task, to, to, to facts. E.g., for instance, should we task, uh, tax the rich more than the poor? All right, uh, and we find this statement, they involve what ought to be, and they are settled by a political choice. Unlike positive economics, which is a statement that involves what is, this one is what ought to be. We find that economics is broadly classified into two, even though there are other major subdivisions, but we shall look at these two. We have microeconomics, which looks at the behavior of individual decision-making organ when he's faced with a problem of choice. So microeconomics look at the behavior of the individual economic agent when he's faced with the problem of choice. And this individual decision-making unit would include households, the consumer farms, the producer, buyers, sellers, whatever you want to call them there. Eh? And of course, macroeconomics will analyze the entire economy, the aggregate production, the aggregate consumption, aggregate savings, and issues affecting it. So macroeconomics is a study of the economy as a whole or the collective decision making by individual households or producers. In other words, if we were to look at economics as trees, eh? Microeconomics would be a tree, whereas macroeconomics would be the forest. Then finally, we look at the basic economic problem. And as a result of the issue of scarcity, every economy must answer the, for the following three questions. The ones I spoke about, what should be produced? 
that is using the economy's scarce resources to produce one thing requires giving up another. If we were to produce better example, be, 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 if we are to pro produce better education, we may have to cut some other things like healthcare. And every society must decide what they'll do with the resources, the scarce resources that they have. How should these goods and services be produced? There are all sorts of choices to be made in determining how goods and services should be produced. Should a farm employ a few skilled or a lot of unskilled workers? Should it produce in its own country or should it use foreign plants and machinery? Should mach manufacturing farms use new or recycled materials, etc., etc.? And of course, for whom goods and services should be produced. Uh, and um, if we must produce, then we must make a decision. Who will get it? If we make a decision that one person or group of persons will receive a, a good, it will obviously mean that the other group will not get it. Eh? Now, the solution to these three economic problems is what we refer to as economic systems. And economic systems will be this our series of three to four videos that will come in next. Thank you for your time. Kindly subscribe and like this video and feel free to share. Santeni.